Today's Modcast 2 is going to be about industry. One of the questions is streaming. Why is the music industry unhappy with YouTube? And what is Vivo? According to an article from The Verge, YouTube claims that it has paid $3 billion to the music industry. However, there is a constant struggle and battle of whether they should be paying more. Music from the music industry are the ones that helped YouTube in the beginning to become famous in the first place after it was first founded in February 2005. This is when Vivo comes into the picture. Vivo stands for Video Revolution and consists of the music videos that are owned by Sony Music Entertainment and the Universal Music Group. YouTube owes several Vivo music videos and Vivo is therefore sharing their advertising revenue and have been able to find an agreement with YouTube. The second question I will address in the, this podcast is about digitization and Web 2.0. How have these caused disruption within the industry? The internet and digitization have ruined or disrupted the main role of the big music companies. Several people do not want to buy CDs anymore, but this is due to the fact that you are now able to download them and stream them directly from YouTube rather than having to go into a shop and pay around 10 to 15 euros, meaning between roughly 8 pounds and 13 pounds for each CD. The change in technology has, of course, also had a huge impact on the music industry. It's developed from vinyl right onto the Discman, the MP3 player, up to the first version of the iPod. And now several people are listening to their music via their smartphone by streaming it from YouTube or using free apps such as SoundCloud, Amp, or Spotify. Um, what's good is that these apps are completely free and they allow you to listen to every music for free. iTunes did up until even just a year ago still charge 99 cents for every piece of music that you wanted to buy. However, their latest invention has to been to introduce Apple Music, where you then pay around, say, 15 euros per month, and then you can download as much music as you want. One of the positive aspects is that several people that are now famous have become known through YouTube. A great example of this is the case of Justin Bieber, who was first discovered on YouTube at the age of 13, 14, and is today a very big pop star. Another case is, of course, the one of Christina Grimmie, who became famous on YouTube and through her many followers and fans decided to enter the voice competition where she had her major breakthrough. The next question I will address is about piracy. What are the consequences? So obviously a major issue with the streaming from YouTube is that it belongs under the category of piracy. Music piracy is the copying of copies of pieces of music for which the artist or the copyright holding company does not receive any money and does not give permission. Of course, this is a contributor to the decrease of the money the different artists are earning in the music industry. Streaming services such as Spotify have been a great help to decrease the amount of users pirating music. Spotify is the free music service that allows users to listen to music without having to pay. However, it doesn't allow users to buy the music. So how does it earn its money? Well, it does this by getting money from the users who subscribe and get the membership and then have to pay a certain amount per month. The next question I will address is how and why vinyl is making a comeback. So clothing stores, such as Urban Outfitters for example, have begun to sell vinyls lately of pop singers and bands that are hitting the charts nowadays. During the last couple of years, vinyl have become a fashionable trend to f have for young adults. These young adults even grew up without vinyl, unlike their parents, and are now discovering the good sound quality of vinyls which are better than CDs. The fact that vinyl has become popular again can be compared to a type of clothes that might have been fashionable in the 80s or 90s and is now coming back as well. According to an article I found at The Guardian, however, vinyl is still only representing 2% of the music industry. So, according to the article, vinyl still remains a niche product, accounting for just 2% of the UK's recorded music market, which is still not a lot. Thank you for listening.